Hey everyone, welcome back. We are here in this lockdown period of this whole global craziness here. And I figured I'd make, I mean, we're gonna make a bunch of videos, but I'm gonna talk about a subject that I'm not really actually too into, but I think the logic of it is quite interesting, which is, you know, kind of preparing for the worst case scenario, right? You might have seen, you know, there's the, kind of these prepper people, you know, they've got the six months of food, they've got the guns, they've got whatever else it is that they've got. And I do think it's worth considering, you know, kind of cheap insurance in life and how to prepare yourself in case the worst thing happens. And ironically, this actually doesn't have to apply specifically to this scenario, but to a broader set of scenarios. And there's a really specific line of thinking that I want to walk you through uh, that I think is super important. And I'm really grateful to have uh, in my life, and so we'll go from there. So what, what are we talking about here? Okay, well, we're saying, hey, look, what if there's some catastrophe, right? What if, I mean, the power goes out for an extended period of time? What if there's some sort of civil unrest? What if there's, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? And there's the obvious things that people talk about, you know, so right now people are stocking up on toiletries, they're stocking up on food, uh, in particular, you know, non-perishable items, you know, canned goods, dried goods, et cetera. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you have a deep freeze, you fill it with uh, there. You maybe buy some fuel, you maybe have a generator. Uh, you can start to get extreme. People say, okay, well, maybe you have a gun, you've got some bullets, maybe you've got a hammer or, you know, some tools, things like this. Uh, maybe you have a backpack if you need to travel somewhere by foot. Uh, maybe you've got a vehicle, so that gives you a little bit more flexibility. Those things are all interesting things. And anyway, then you can get into the people who say, hey, you should have a garden, you should be able to grow your own food. and you know, then you can have some sort of a locked down facility and you can, you know, you can go crazy that way. The thing that I think, you know, some of those are, are great, like in the sense of, look, if you're going to turn around and have to eat food anyway, what's the harm in buying some in advance? So that, you know, if something goes wrong, you have a bit of a storage there, right? So canned goods, dried goods, etc. Having some of them on hand in general in life doesn't cost you anything extra because you're gonna eat them. So no big deal. My, my view in life from the perspective of risk management is anytime I can have insurance that costs me nothing, that's a good thing. Why wouldn't you want that, right? So another alternative to that is cash, right? Having some physical cash around, uh, you know, it that doesn't cost you anything to have that because it's the same whether it's in the bank or in cash, but if for some reason you can't get into the bank, you can't get to an ATM, what, maybe the ATM isn't working, whatever, you have cash. So having some cash around, never a bad idea. Uh, having, the, if we're talking about right now, uh, currency is uncertain, right? We're not sure what's gonna happen with the euro, the dollar spike, well, first the dollar dropped, then the dollar spiked, now the dollar's back, et cetera, the US dollar we're talking about here. You know, having some diversity of currencies, if it makes sense for you, right? So, you know, maybe you're spending in one area because you know, you're doing online advertising or something, but you live uh, in place that's a different currency than your customers. So keeping a few currencies around to mitigate your risk, not a bad idea. Having a little bit of uh, some sort of diversity of physical gold, an interesting point that a bunch of people have made is when you compose a diversified portfolio, having a small portion of gold and rebalancing almost always improves the overall performance of it. And maybe I'll do a video in the future about how uh, volatility undermines compounding. Uh, we can have a whole conversation about that, but that's another another issue. Having a gun, you know, some people would say, hey, having a gun and bullets, well, you know, it's like 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, something like that, small risk. Realistically, you know, very, very low probability you need it in a bunch of parts of the world, you know, that's a thing. Uh, having some fuel around. I mean, if you're gonna have a vehicle, if you have a jerry can of extra fuel, makes no difference, you bought it, you know, no big deal. Having a generator, maybe that's a capital expense that you're gonna have, but you know, maybe if you have the space for it, you know, it's something to worry about. Uh, those things, I think, all pale though, in comparison to the far, far, far more important thing, which is if you're going to be in a tough situation, what is the most valuable commodity? Uh, maybe it's not a commodity, but the most valuable thing, it's probably not food, it's probably not gold, it's probably not guns, it's probably leadership and relationships, okay? So if you're in a situation and you get sick, what's the best thing that you can possibly have? You can have people around you who love you and care about you to take care of you, right? 
if you need to have access to different resources, like having a network of people who you care about and they care about you and some leadership skills to communicate and bring people together and have community, whether things go good or things go bad, that's an enormous payoff. So one of the things that I'm working on right now in general is just engaging more people around conversations around this type of thing, right? Around opportunities. And by all means, please reach out to us, email us, post some comments, you know, request what you want. If you have somebody you think should be interviewed, you know, we'd love to do a joint video with them, whatever it is, right? Cultivating that community is, in my opinion, one of the best safeguards against things going wrong and also one of the main things that's going to provide you opportunity in terms of moving up. And especially if you're talking about people in different countries, you know, when you have geographic diversity, this is one of the things, you know, we're talking about offshore citizen, we're talking about being global, etc. I'm really grateful that I can facilitate all kinds of deals and transactions because I know people in North America, I know people in Latin America, I know people in Europe, I know people in the Middle East, I know people in Asia, I know people in different parts of these areas. And what that means is that these different opportunities get pulled together and give you advantages that are unique, uh, that position you in a world that has really not adapted to that yet. So you have some sort of a competitive advantage. So it's a very, very good thing. And so I'd highly recommend, you know, cultivate those relationships, work on all that kind of stuff and uh, you know, build your, build your network as you travel, make a point of getting to know people, stay in touch with people. You know, one of the beautiful things today is we have Facebook, we have the internet, you know, you have an ability to connect with people from different areas and that potentially, uh, in terms of just business opportunities, it gives you a huge advantage. It's something that costs you nothing. Like we talk here about, you know, forming companies and saving on tax and all this. Well, having strong relationships of people who can source out, you know, maybe you're sourcing suppliers, maybe you're sourcing quality staff somewhere, maybe you're sourcing whatever. Having trusted people who can bring that to you is an enormous advantage and it turns out if things go bad, it's also an enormous advantage. So anyway, that's just a thought for the day. I uh, hope you're doing well. Like I said, if you're interested, uh, like these videos, subscribe, join us, and I'm going to see you guys on the next video for our future thoughts.